Welcome to Lesson 6.4, Common Denominators and Equivalent Fractions. So let's begin by taking a look at our essential question. How can you rewrite a pair of fractions so that they have a common denominator? Well, let's begin by unlocking the problem and taking a look at our word problem. Sarah planted two one-acre gardens. One had three section of flowers, and the other had four sections of flowers. She plans to divide both gardens into more sections so that they have the same number of equal size sections. How many sections will each garden have? Well, it says that you can use a common denominator or a common multiple of two or more denominators to write fractions that have the same part of a whole. So let's begin by looking at one way we can do this, and that is to multiply the denominators. So let's think. If we have our two gardens, we divide each one-third into fours. So we begin with our garden that is divided into three, and we begin by taking that and dividing each of our thirds into fours. So let's take an attempt at that. It's not going to be perfect considering I'm drawing with my finger. One, two, ooh. Okay, so we have our four there. Not perfect, like I said, since I'm drawing with my finger. But we'll try to do better on the next one. There we go. Okay, and there we go. And then it says to divide each fourth into thirds. And we see that we have our other garden here that is already divided into four pieces. So now we have to take each of those four pieces and divide them into three. Again, this is going to be a little tricky since I'm drawing with my finger. You guys can probably do much better in your book, but it'll be okay. So now if we take a look, we see that we have our garden that is divided into thirds that we've also subdivided into four pieces, each piece, and we have our garden that is divided into fours that is subdivided into three equal pieces. So now if we take a look at each of the holes, they will be divided into the same size parts, twelfths. And if we count each of these tiny little parts on each of our gardens, we will see that each has been divided into 12 pieces. So both gardens will have 12 sections. So we'll do this by multiplying the denominators to find a common denominator. A common denominator of 1 third and 1 fourth is, and if we multiply our denominators 3 and our denominator of 4, together we will get 12. So write one-third and one-fourth as equivalent fractions using the common denominator. So we start with our denominator of 12 for each fraction. And we know that when we multiply 3, we multiply it by 4 to get 12. So whatever we do to the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. And 1 times 4 equals 4. And we know that... 1 fourth to get to the denominator of 12, we multiply by 3. So whatever we do to the denominator, we also do to the numerator. So 1 times 3 equals 3. So the equivalent fraction for 1 third is 4 twelfth, and the equivalent fraction for 1 fourth is 3 twelfth. Now let's take a look at another way, and that is to use a list down here. So we'd make a list of the first eight non-zero multiples of 3 and 4. And this you should be somewhat familiar with. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. And the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. Now you won't always have to list the first eight multiples because as we saw, once we got to the third multiple of four and the fourth multiple of three, we see a common denominator. 
So then it says to circle the common multiples. And we see that we have common multiples of 12. And we also have multiples of 24 in common. But we want to find the first one we come to, or the lowest number. And we see that is 12. So we use one of the common multiples as a common denominator to write equivalent fractions for one-third and one-fourth. So we begin with our denominator of 12 for both fractions. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So both gardens can have 12 or 24 sections since both of these are common denominators. Okay, let's take a look at another example. We begin by finding the least common denominator. So it says to find the least common denominator of two or more fractions by finding the least common multiple of two or more numbers. So we're going to look at another example. It says to use the least common denominator. Find the least common denominator of three-fourths and one-sixth. Use the least common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. So let's begin with step one, which is to list non-zero multiples of the denominators. So we'll find the least common multiple. So the multiples of four. Multiples of four are four, because we always begin with the first number, four, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. And we're going to stop there and see if we have anything in common with the multiples of 6. If not, then we would keep going with both lists. So again, we start with the number 6, 12, and look, we can already stop because we see that we have a common multiple of 12. And since that's the first number that we have in common between the 4 and the 6, we know that's going to be the least common multiple. So the least common denominator of 3 fourths and 1 6 is 12. So next step is to use the least common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. Now, we're going to have to think to ourselves, what number multiplied by the denominator of the fraction will result in the least common denominator? So we look at our fraction of 3 fourths, and we're going to use 12 as our common denominator. So what times 4 will equal 12? And we know that 4 times 3 equals 12. But we also know that whatever we do to the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. So 3 times 3 equals 9. Now let's look at our fraction of 1 6. What can we multiply by 6 that will give us 12? Well, we know that 6 times 2 equals 12. And whatever we do to the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. Now we know 1 times 2 equals 2. So 3 fourths can be written as the fraction 9 twelfths. And 1 sixth can be written, rewritten as the fraction 2 twelfths. Okay, so let's take a look at our notes for tonight's lesson, finding the common denominators. You know that you can push pause right here in order to get all the notes copied down into your journal. All right, and let's take a look at tonight's password for this lesson. It says, what is a reasonable estimate of 1 12th plus 7 eighths? Is it about one half, about one, about one and one half, or about two? So be sure to work this out and bring it with you tomorrow as the password for tonight's lesson. See you then.